It is November 2020, and uh, bales of straws are being heaped upon camels' backs all around the world, and everything is breaking. That is a really, really good image. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe we can keep that. Get the music! music! Coming to you live from the great indoors of New York City, I'm Brian Teo. Joining me today from Green Bay, Wisconsin, is Kevin McLeod. Together, we'd like to welcome you to Composerish, where we discuss issues facing modern working composers, sometimes. So, yes, it's November 2020, which is amazing. November 3rd, 2020. It's currently November 3rd, 2020, as we're recording this. So, you know, hope is in the air. But that's not the big news, Brian. That is not the big news. What is the big news? The big news. Cine samples, 50% off (laughs) the entire month of November. (laughs) Everything. Their most recent stuff, you want Voxos, you can get it. You want Men of the North, choirs of hearty frost people, half off. Everything's 50% off. That is the big news. I feel like I've bought most of what I'd want from Cine samples so far, but I do have a problem with them, and this has been ongoing for quite a while. I use Vienna Ensemble Pro along with Logic. Yes. You know what this is. For anybody that doesn't know what this is, it's just software that hosts instruments outside of your DAW, and then you just plug it in, et cetera, et cetera. Look it up if you don't know, if you're curious. We're not going to go into that right now. But I have an issue specifically with sample instruments where it will like chop off the attack of any of my notes, and so I'll get just the release, and that's it. What? Yeah, it's strange. So I contacted their help, and the guy was like, oh, well, you know, first what you should do is rebuild your database. And I was like, okay, I did that. It didn't work. Yeah. And then I didn't hear back. And then I was like, hey, you guys anything because what'll happen is a lot of times i'll be working on scores um and some of the percussion and stuff that i'll use from cine samples is like detail oriented stuff so i won't really oh absolutely yeah and and it's like i'll mix it down quietly it'll be a layer that's there and then i'll come back to it like the next day to bounce down do a final mix down and render out and i'll be like oh this doesn't sound as dynamic as it did before but you know i guess it's okay and i'll bounce it out and i've actually delivered tracks and then only later on realize that there were elements missing because it just dropped the samples for some reason and the only way to get them back is to delete the instrument from my session and then to reload it. I can't just reload the samples. And then just drag all the old MIDI into the new one? No, I mean, I can keep the MIDI there. I have to remove the actual instrument from the oh the rack. okay I see what you mean from the instrument yeah strip. yep and okay. then and then I have to like and put it back again so it's it's not that ah. bad but I have to catch it I have to know that the instrument isn't playing because sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't which is problematic right. for you know professional work obviously so I got back yeah. to them like I had to prod them and be like hey uh, I'm still having huh. this issue what's the deal and the guy was like oh well you should try um, re-downloading our samples and rebuild your database I'm like that is exactly what you told me to do last time and it still didn't fix it so. Can we try uh, something else? And then again, silence. So Jiggle the mod wheel. Jiggle the mod wheel. Did you jiggle the mod wheel? I'm not super happy with Cine samples right now because this is software that's pretty industry standard. A lot of people use VEP. And I can't believe that I'm the only person having this problem, but I haven't been able to find a whole lot of other people talking about it. So I don't know what the deal is. I, yeah, I've, I mean, I've but, never... I've never had anything like yeah, that. It does make me wary to buy more of their instruments when I've already spent a lot of money basically getting their entire orchestral suite and those instruments yeah. are more or less useless to me now because Oh god. I still I love their percussion. I still use their percussion and all this stuff, but I have to like it, it's annoying that I have to babysit it. That is very weird. So Cine samples, should you happen to be listening to this, please get in touch with me. I'd love to try to fix it at some point. The other problem is my fixing times are sandwiched between projects. Like I constantly got something to work on. <laughs> like, yes. So it's like, they'll be like, can you try this? And I'm like, okay, yes, maybe, but you're going to have to wait a week because I'm not going to touch anything while I'm working on this score yeah. because I could potentially bork everything. So I got to wait yeah. until I'm done. And then I'll something about the production machine, right? Yeah. You don't want to do anything like I'm, yeah, I'm not also not no. going to update OS 10 to the newest version, like, (laughs) mid-project. That's just dumb. I'm getting a little loosey-goosey with my updates these days. So are you on Big Sur right now? I I don't know. Probably. Is it the new one? Are things broken? Probably. It's the newest big, big update. Uh, Hang on. Let me go check. Let me go check. I'll I'll be right back. I think you're on the newest version of Catalina, I would imagine. Catalina! I'm on Catalina. So there's a newer one? Big Sur is the newest version of the OS, but it's not, like, automatically pushing it yet. I think it's available. You can download it, but I think it's still kind of in beta. 
months. Some people have had issues. And I'm like, that was just dumb. <laughs> I usually wait like a year at least after a new OS is yeah. released. And then even then, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to install it yet. I'll wait until way later just to make sure everything is okay and all the problems have been ironed out and all that. Right now, I am in a blessed time of my life. I have no impending deadlines. Like, zero. Huh. Yeah, I've been, like, working on a video game for a while. That one's done. Everything, everything's done. And so I can afford to just go, yep, hey, <laughs> let's, let's try to rework everything and then I'll have to do a lot of problem solving and maybe something will break. I mean, if my Cine samples breaks, though, holy sh**, I don't I don't even want to think about that. Well, that's a major part of your template, isn't it? It is. I don't have templates, but I load them up all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's a major part of your workflow, isn't it? <laughs> it is. But yeah, workflow. Yes, it is a major part of my workflow. This does bring me to a question, and maybe this is moot for you, but I've been finding that there's a lot of stuff, specifically pads, that I don't own that are kind of fiddledy. Like... I'll be listening to the score of some documentary and I'll notice that there's like this really dynamic pad in the background that's like moving and morphing and has got all these like sounds mm, and stuff. And then I'll look at yes. like the pads that I own already, like in software, either stock logic or things that I've yeah. bought or things that come as a part yeah. of like another synth. And a lot of them are really terrible. They're not as subtle. They don't work for that world. So then I'm like, okay, I need to start building a synth that will make a good pad for this tense Ooh. section, which is a lot of work. <laughs> it's it a, a lot of work. I'm going to tell you what I do, and it's not a lot of work at all. So what do you do? There's a thing called gravity that I use. Okay. I think it's from Heaviosity. I'm writing this down. It is a ridiculous pad, motion, lively, never repeating month of, like, you know, it's got like three different elements that all pulse at different rates huh. and just gives you this evolving thing and it's all works with the mod wheel. So gravity, maybe gravity two, and then there's a thing called uh, va <laughs> void. Hang on. Natural forces and vocalize. I have text documents on all of the pads of all of these things and the yeah. things that they do. So like, you know, Haunted Aluvatar is like a vocal sort of choir ethereal huh. thing. And then there's some that are just like, you know, gritty and dirty. Yeah. And, and some are beautiful and pristine. Yeah. And those are my workhorse pads. Yeah. Because I haven't really done a lot of pad work or if I have, it's been like, I'll create a bed of ethereality with instruments or yeah. maybe in back in the day when I used to do a lot more drone work, I just do everything with granular synthesis and acoustic sound sources, but that's, it's time consuming to do it that way. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. And recently I watched this yeah. video by Trevor Morris, who was saying that you should write, if you want to write for TV, you should be able to, to spank out about six minutes a day, every day. And yep. it's like, yeah, that's a lot of music. <laughs> that's about right. And you need to be able to streamline your workflow then. It's like you don't have the time to do everything right. custom. You can maybe do a thing or two custom here and there, but like you can't do everything from the ground up, unfortunately. So having yeah. some of these things preset is important. I've been finding that trying to make pads custom for each project is just not a good Oof. idea. Because it takes rough. a lot of time. I mean, unless you're doing like a period pad from the 70s or 80s. What's, what is that? What's that period pad from the 70s or 80s? Like, if you're doing a piece of music that is supposedly written in the 70s on synthesizers, they only had so many synths. Oh, I see. Yeah, because it's it's very simple waveforms that you're dealing right. with and stuff. So the pads too. back then were not what we have today. Right, now they're crazy. And if you watch things, like, let's say, like the Blacklist <laughs> yeah. or whatever, the entire show is done with pads. And yeah. it's crazy how much detail is in the sound. And it's like, I yeah. don't know how much of that is custom made and how much of that is just like presets that have been tweaked a bit and morphed yeah. over time. Because it's like, I mean, those episodes are long and those episodes are also wall to wall music. So yeah. I can't imagine they are able to spend a ton of time per episode on those. Yeah. Especially when it's like not something that anybody's going to remember. It's just tension while they're talking about a criminal or something. And the same thing with a lot of documentaries. It's just like gritty, dark textures. So. I've noticed that my pad game is lacking. And so that's another thing that I was like, I need to 
preset. I need to work on these and have like a bank yes. of things that I can go to. So what are other things that you feel like are good back pocket things to have ready to go that are like your saving grace? Man, those heaviosities. Original soundtrack for the video game is about 42, 44 minutes long. 14, 16 cuts. Wow. Loopable. Vocalize, Vocalize 2, and Gravity. Yeah. They're in everything, and the other thing that's in everything is Damage 2. Damage 2, I still haven't dug into that yet. Oh my god, there's nothing that I can do that doesn't get better with Damage 2. Wait, but Damage 2 has pads as well? I thought it was just percussion. No, it is just percussion. Okay, so you're, you're adding... But I was doing a video game, so I did need some... Got it. There's a couple things that I've gotten for pad work, and honestly, I haven't been too impressed with them. I think uh, I have yeah. three different versions of the same thing. It's like Evolve, Evolve Mutations, and Evolve Mutations 2. Those are oh, yeah, yeah. the ones that I have. I think those came standard with like a Native Instruments pack or something. Okay, I have those as well. There are some okay pads in that. Not a lot. There's some of them that are like a little bit too hyper-specific where it's like, yeah. If you use them, a little, little too sci-fi. Yeah, or like they they have like chattering of like woodland elves in the background or something yeah. like that. And and they're too unique where if you use that and somebody else uses that, it's going to be incredibly apparent right away. It's like you almost want right. something a little bit more generic and then you can layer other stuff on top of that to make it your own, you know? Well, my friend, let me talk to you a little bit more about heaviosities things. Okay. Uh <laughs> because they fix that sh real easy. <laughs> If you've got like a very complex pad, there's a lot of shit going on. And they just have a simple mixer. It's like, just turn just turn it off. Yeah. Or load up a different thing. Can you automate those parameters? Oh my, oh, oh my, yes, my friend. Because that's the brass yes, ring. Can. To be able to, like, to, be able to <laughs> yes, fade things can. in and out, that's important to yes. me. Yes. It exposes all of those to your DAW so that you can automate all of that's the great. levels independently. Yep. I thought I would gotten gravity at some point, but I'm not seeing it in my... Um... I think gravity is an expensive one. Is it? If I'm not mistaken. It is a big one. It's 450 bucks. Yeah, that's uh, an investment. For what it does, it's a lot of money. Yeah. However, if that's what you need to do, oh, it's good at it. Do you have experience with Omnisphere? Because that's one that everyone has. I've never bought it. I've come close to purchasing it every once in a while, but I'm like, ah, I don't know if I'm actually going to use this. I've also never purchased Omnisphere. Oh. So that's like the one that everyone owns. Everyone owns Omnisphere it and people say it's important. I have listened to demos. I've kind of watched walkthroughs and I've never been. All right, Omnisphere, here's your problem. Here's your problem. I don't know what Omnisphere sounds like. I assume it sounds digital, right? It's a synth. And it's a synth, but you can have a synth that doesn't sound digital. You can have a synth that sounds like lions roaring and, you you know, it depends on what you're pumping into it. I mean, if it's like a pure additive synth, I'll just use the ES2. I have no use. I have no use for Omnisphere except for the presets. Yeah, my problem is I got into synthesis early on, and I got deep into it in a very basic sense of the word, and then I never really evolved from there. So I got into like simple waveforms. I got into how to manipulate those with additive synthesis and frequency modulation, and then I kind of stopped there. I've done some stuff with like granular manipulation of sound, but I wouldn't even say I've gotten into granular synthesis because that's like a whole other thing or wavetable synthesis that's another thing where i've i've used wavetable synthesizers but if you press me against a wall i don't know that i would be able to like manipulate it with the confidence that i can manipulate basic simple waveforms you know um i can tweak knobs and find something yeah. that i like but i couldn't build you a wavetable synthesizer from the ground up in maximus that's not true i could build a basic basic <laughs> basic i could build a basic <laughs> wavetable synthesizer way to flex, in maximus way to flex your max skills there's levels i think like you can know about something and be able to use it without really right. knowing it intimately. When I feel like I know something is like when I can imagine a sound and I know exactly how to make it without having to like dick around right. in the DAW. Like I just, I can tell you right. by uh, sitting at a table, I can draw you pictures. I can tell you what <laughs> yes. to look for. And I can tell you from step one to the end exactly how to do that thing. That's when I right. feel like I've internalized it. And when it comes to wavetable synthesis and, and oh, granular okay. synthesis and stuff, I think I'm still kind of poking around a lot and experimenting and trying so i don't I, I does anyone understand granular synthesis I, like there are people that do i'm sure that that they can get to the thing because i get what you're saying it's like oh this needs a um, 
a pulse switch modulated square wave and a triangle wave and the triangle wave has a heart attack <laughs> and then we put a flanger on it and you can you're talking about like like this is how to make a synth, simple synth yeah re right? like recipes yeah yeah recipes not we maybe not have all done it but uh, i know what you're talking about yeah, when when it comes to some of the more advanced synthesis, I think there are just so many parameters that can be changed to <laughs> manipulate the yeah. sound that it's it's a lot harder to wrap my head around. But I also don't like wasting time with synthesizers when I'm like I feel like I'm just poking around. A lot of that yeah. work seems to have to be like pre work, like you have to yeah. mess around with the synth, kind of get some ideas, maybe save some presets. But that's not work that you're gonna do while you're writing music unless you have mm. this incredible luxury of time to just, you know, waste. But most clients, if they're paying you, are probably not going to be super happy. <laughs> you have to like, yeah, it's, I know it's been a month out, but I'm, I think I'm starting to find the score now. It's like, what are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like, no, I need a little bit more body in my lead delayed synth. Yeah. And I'm having a hard time adding, you know, just like an offset <laughs> yeah. sine wave or, and they're like, yeah. I don't give a flying f Yep. <laughs> about your offset sine wave. Yep. Uh, that's the other trick that I kind of forget about all the time and need to remind myself is uh, most people who are hiring you do not care about the ins and outs <laughs> and technicalities of music. They don't care. No. If you can tell them, I still need to do this, like if you lay it out with any sort of specificity at all, you're just going to lose them. It's like, they don't care. They just need to know it's going to get done. So tell them it still needs some tweaks. I'll have it done by this time. And that's it. Cut right to the chase. I guarantee you it will sound like something that I wrote. <laughs> Did you hire me because of other things that I wrote? I'm saying, yeah. Sometimes so, yes, sometimes no. Give me a moment. That's true. We both kind of have a wide range. Yeah, sometimes you just, sometimes people just hire you because they don't know who to hire and you're, you just yeah. happen to be, in fact, I think most of the time that's the case. How many gigs have you gotten because somebody just knows that you do music and they need music? Uh, not zero. It's, I think it's significant. <laughs> it I have definitely been called in on the last minute at multiple things and you don't even have to pay me. I just feel like a superhero then. Like, <laughs> oh, somebody else failed? Yes! Don't make that Let widely Kevin known. step I feel in. Like I will not sleep for the next six days. I'm cool with it. I I feel like for most working composers out there, they don't want you to say that because you're just going to ruin the industry. Like it just, uh, I'm don't. ruining the industry already, <laughs> Brian. Don't, don't, I'm ruining it. Don't now. Okay. All people hiring potential composers disregard what Kevin says. You should pay a lot. Don't. For music. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and when you have to hire somebody, music should be free. Like the air. When you have to hire somebody last minute, it costs more. So that's a, that's a thing. It, it it, it yes, if you want to guarantee that'll happen, it does cost more. <laughs> or you get what you pay for. But the communication, I will say this. When I'm talking to clients who have lost composers, because this is a I mean, this happens. Yeah, of course. Composers. I've lost a couple of people myself, and I don't feel proud of that, but like I'm usually pretty good about it. But once you start talking to those people, your emails are going to be flying back and forth at least daily. Even if you have a bad day, you tell them. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> and give them an update because I think they're just anxious. Yes, here's the update. Yeah, just re-EQ it and then send it again. And it's like, oh, I'm working on a new EQ. You can tell me. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you can, you can fake a day's worth of work in 15 minutes. Yeah, I've... But I've, you shouldn't. <laughs> I me I've never done that, by the way, Brian. I've never done no, that. Neither have I. I can't Definitely believe not. that even m came into my brain. Definitely not. No. I had a really quick turnaround on a score. They wanted something like in, it was like a day or two after I had actually gotten a cut of the film because they wanted to submit it to this thing. And, and it was because the person previously working on it had been let go. It just wasn't working out. And I was yeah. like the oh guy. And I knew that, but it was also like, it was a little bit too fast of a turnaround. I heard the music that was tempt in there and I was like, there, no, this is, <laughs> you need a lot more music than you think you do. And this is kind of generally oh, the case. Oh, interesting. They don't look at the film in the same way that we look at the film and they don't understand right. what role music plays the same way that we understand what role music plays. So there was like a lot of talking in this film, like a lot of talking and nothing going on underneath it. And there was also a lot of subtext. And I'm like, 
there's a lot of different ways that you can view this scene. <laughs> we have opportunities here. Right, and we're not sure who we're supposed to be siding with. Right! And they're like, well, we want to leave that open to interpretation. I'm like, okay, I know you say that, but you don't. You really don't. Yeah, you're not you're not Kubrick. You can't do that. You can rewatch the same film and understand it from different perspectives, but if you don't choose a perspective, at least even loosely at the beginning, it's just yeah. going to come across as boring. People will watch it. They're not really sure that they're supposed to feel anything. It's just people talking. But it's like, yeah. this scene, I know the scene is supposed to be intense. It's supposed to be kind of like taut because they're talking about some serious stuff. And yeah. the dialogue isn't going there. The acting isn't really going there. But if I add this little drone, it will go there. <laughs> <Which> is- <laughs> anyway, it ended up being too much work to do in one day, basically. So I sent them yeah. a draft of what I had so far. And I was like... I can get this done for the other competitions that you want to submit this to and whatever. It'll be fine. But for yep. one day, there's no way I can get this done and it will be a hack job if I get you something. So I was like, I can give you this and finish up the rest really quickly. But I think the best idea is to submit it with the temp music and then we'll focus on the other ones after that. I don't know if this is a good lesson for all of our uh, you know, directors, producers out there. But it is possible to get a reasonable score for your film in a day. It is possible. It is. You, I don't. I. I don't think. I don't think so. I. I think you like know. the music. I think is, you've done it. I've done it. We've done it. Right. I think here's the deal. If you want me to turn around a full score for a film in a day, you have to let go of a lot of creative control because there's not going to be time for back and forth. First, that's true. I'm not talking a full feature. I'm talking like a ten a minute, short, short film. Ten minute. Yeah. Right. There will be no back and forth. You trust us or you don't. We're pretty good. Right. So, I mean, there's that. You have to give up control and just be like, you know, yeah. take the wheel. And then the other thing is, if you want a quick turnaround for that, don't listen to Kevin. That costs money. Don't. You that have to, does that, cost you, money. You have to, if, if you want me to drop everything at the, at the <laughs> right. drop of a hat, watch your film several times before you even start scoring because that's what you have to do to kind of- Oh, before you even start talking to them, right? right? And then stay up the entire night to try to crank something out. Like, I mean, it's, first of all, it's going to be like all MIDI instruments, so don't expect it's, the most yes. tight sound design ever. And nope. also, you, you pay for that quick turnaround just as you would with anything else. It's like- That's true. Emergency plumber. Yeah. Yeah. You need your dry cleaning done by tomorrow? That costs extra. And that's just dry cleaning. It, that's not creative service. But it can be done. Yes, it can be. <laughs> if you've got the money, oh, it can be done. But if it's a passion project and you spent a lot of time on it and you really want the oh, best music, yeah. I think that you know planning a little bit ahead and having some lead time will get you a better result. Absolutely. Yeah, don't count on it. Yeah. However, don't despair. Oh, by the way, if you're thinking that your short film, which is set in 1945, which has a lot of original swing music because you can't afford the rights to Sing Sing Sing, that's not going to happen in a day. Well, then, I don't yes. care who you hire. You cannot do that. Yeah, big band music is hard. Trying to do even full symphonic scores, there are some more oh, tricks yeah. that you can do to do that quickly, but like the bigger right. the ensembles, the harder it is. It's like, if right. you need something turned around really quickly, look at like maybe a couple of strings and a piano, or even better, right. you, piano exactly. and some synthesizers. <laughs> piano with some synths or a couple of drums or a harp it'll be appropriate it'll get done may not be the best but it is possible and you can't expect lord of the rings in a day no you can't even watch the lord of the rings in a day no you can't <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about things that took ages to write and revisions and revisions and revisions and lots of research and then recording sessions and editing sessions and and mixing sessions and all these it took a long time. So you have to adjust your expectations accordingly, I guess. Right. And right now, caveat is 2020. By 2024, your expectations may be different. Sure. Yeah. The tools will be different. The skills the will be different. The tools are going to be very different. Absolutely. Back in the day, just the idea of turning around a full <laughs> score in a day would not have been possible. <laughs> You got to have some sort of like cracked up symph, like a, I'm sorry, a symph, what do you call it when a symphony is all on crack? Is that a thing? Uh, it's not yet, but it should be. All right. So you'd have to have like a cracked up symphony. <laughs> like just yeah. like, all right, what do you got? What do you got? What are the changes? What are the changes? All right, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot. I mean, and you'd also have to have like a team of people think writing like one 
person just oh, to write yeah. out the themes, another person to like right. start cranking. As you're writing out the themes, you hand it off to them, and the other person starts right. orchestrating and arranging while you're continuing to write more themes. And then yep. another person is actually doing like the copying and like and, and <laughs> yes. printing of parts and the engraving. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and then and then you just put that onto stands and start recording as you're still writing. And even <laughs> then, I don't think that's possible. Like it's just it's too much. Uh, DAWs make the work a little bit easier and virtual they, instruments they, make the work a little do, bit easier. But, but holy boys, holy boys. Yeah. So biggest news, biggest news of November 2020, Cine Samples, 50% off of everything. There's probably some other things going on in the news, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and keep your eyes open because I'm guessing holiday sales are going to get crazy. People are going to want you to buy things. I mean, they say it's supposed to be for gifts, but like, I mean, who's doing that? You're going to buy it for yourself. Don't gift somebody a steel drum. Just, just well, don't. if it's a physical steel drum, that'd be fine. But if you give somebody yeah. a vert, like, it's like, oh, this is a download code. You can. You oh can man, we need your- to talk about your new track for Free PD because I believe it uses your new tone drum thing. What is that called? Oh, the the hand pan. Hand pan. Yeah, I used some of the hand pan for that, and then I used some samples for that as well. It's, so. Yeah, well, it sounded pretty, uh, sounded pretty minor. It sounded it's, pretty uh, groovy. It's 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 You're, hippie-ish. I, you I, made it work, man. I faked it. I faked it a bit. <laughs> I've actually used it quite a bit just for like adding like ostinatos in the back of tracks whenever I need to do like gritty documentary yeah. style kind of like suspense. It is just one note, but it has made me understand that maybe I can collect some more melodic percussion, I guess. Yeah. So look forward to some more of that. Cue the outro! Cue the outro! Cue the outro! I'd like to thank everyone for listening. If you have any comments and suggestions of things you'd like to hear us babble on about, please feel free to contact us at composerish at gmail.com. Until next time, keep on writing. That was organic as f*** though.